Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here uh, with Israeli News Live, and I figured I would uh, share with you on our Patreon channel three more of those, uh, well, surviving beyond all uh, odds or something like that. I did the video there as a testimonial, and probably the most famous survival near-death experiences I have, I totally forgot to even share on the original video. Um, I just kind of did it off the cuff, so to speak, anyway, so I didn't get a chance to remember all the different other issues I've gone through in life. And uh, and there's actually at least three more. Well, one of them I don't really consider a near death because it was a uh, uh, it was a situation where when I was 21 years old I had a heart attack, uh, and at the time I didn't know it was a heart attack. I knew something really strange was going on. Uh, later, they discovered I had uh, scar tissue in my left ventricle from a heart attack. And and I may share a little bit more information here with you guys on things that I've been through in life that I, you might just find as a blessing or encouragement, uh, especially a particular miracle that happened for me too. But this one here, though, I want to share this near-death experience because it was a miracle. Uh, it was a miracle, uh, at least for my own sake, that I did not die on this day, September 22nd, 2004, uh, near French Hill in Jerusalem. Uh, this is where I lived. I lived very close uh, to the French Hill area there uh, in a place called Givat Hamivitar. Uh, and I literally lived right directly across the street from Gershon Solomon. Now, I can't reveal where that is other than to say Givat Hamivitar because uh, I wouldn't want to reveal where Gershon lives. Uh, he is a, has been a target of assassination attempts over the years. And, uh, but, but at any rate, there was, uh, let me just see if I could pull this up on Google Maps. Uh, I don't, let's see here. Google Maps, and I'll just put Jerusalem, Israel, so it kind of pops that right up for us from the very beginning here. Um, let's see if it brings it up. No, it doesn't. Let's see, go to Jeru Jerusalem. And I want to give you guys a little bit better view of where this was at here. And uh, let me just, we'll use the this, this version of the maps there. Let's see here. Um, up in this area right here should be the French Hill area, if I'm not mistaken. I think this is French Hill over here, but I have to kind of get a little, oh, nope, maybe it's this one right here. I believe so, yeah. I think that's where we're at there, yeah. It should be, that should be the French Hill area, I think, but there again, oh, no, no, I know it's not. Hang on one second, oh, forgive me there. Here we go, there's French Hill. You can see it on the map now. There's French Hill. Uh, I lived in this neighborhood right here, as you're seeing there on your map there. This is called Givat Hamivitar. Uh, this is like your little entrance way into the neighborhood there. And I rented a house. Uh, we had a, uh, an Israeli roommate there. We shared this house together there. And this little forest area uh, right here is a place that I used to go pray at a lot. Now, it's changed dramatically since I lived there. All this that you see here did not exist at all. It was actually, uh, they, they've done a lot of construction there. I never even knew that existed. And But this, this little road here was actually a dirt path and it went down a very, very steep hill when you first went in there. And uh, I like going back up in there because you could go in here and pray and you'd find a lot of the Orthodox rabbis, every once in a while you'd find here, spotted out here and there just praying themselves in, in the little forest as well. And of course you get to see the, the, the little uh, deer that lived in there. Believe it or not, in such a small little forest, yeah, there were deer that lived there. Uh, this road did not exist other than a little dirt path, but it looks like since when I lived there, they paved it since they uploaded the, or, or changed everything. It was far more wooded at the time as well, and none of this was there. None of this was there at all. It's just French Hill. You'd come up here. You had that little overpass, but when you would come up here on the main road here, uh, there were sidewalks on both sides of the road there. And this is French Hill to your right. And 
there were some Palestinians that dropped off the suicide bomber right here at the intersection here where I would come down, she came down, and we were literally parallel going together at, uh, at the time all this happened. And I would came from my little house, and like I said, I always walked down, and I would pray every day there in the forest there. Um, and uh, as I was going that day, I was, um, I was on the phone, and this was just just a little flat area there where you first turned in, and there was, it wasn't all these lanes in here, it's just a little narrow spot. And as I turned in to go to get ready to, to, as I was walking there, I found myself going down that steep hill right in that area there, and I always hated going that way because it's so steep, it's very hard on the shins as you're walking, you know, when you're going on a really steep area. I prefer to actually just walk right down here and come down the side of the highway there and, uh, and go over the guardrail there and then go down to the woods that way. That was the easy way to do. But the one thing I always did if I was on the phone with somebody back in the U.S., right when you'd get around here and come around this curve here, the wind would be blowing, uh, coming out of the uh, west, and it was very noisy, and people would always say, I can't hear you, what do you, got the phone in the wind, and so I would turn around, and I would face the opposite direction to keep from, uh, and there was a, there was a little, at that time, there was a little, little pole there where I would always stand at, right here at this intersection here, and, um, and so I would do that, and so as I'm going along, Next thing I know, I find myself going down that steep hill there. And this thought comes to my mind um, out of nowhere that said, you idiot, you know you hate going this way. And, you know, the old saying is, is, you know, God, you know, he, he, he directs our footsteps. And a lot of times we don't realize it's God moving us to protect us from something that's about to happen. And so I'm like, that, you know, I thought to myself, well, yeah, that's true. I do. I hate going this way. But I'm, I'm still talking on the phone. But I didn't realize there was a battle going on inside of my mind between our Heavenly Father and Satan himself. Satan trying to keep me going that way. Or excuse me, God trying to keep me going that way in a safe direction. But Satan didn't want me to go that way. He knew what he had intended for me. And so... Uh, you know, so I start back out, and when I do, this other girl, she's coming down the sidewalk. She's been let out. Now, she's on the opposite side of the street there, but, you know, at that time, it was a fairly good-sized intersection, not as big as it is now, but, but still uh, dangerously close together. And we literally, as I came back out, were almost simultaneously. I was a little ahead of her. And she was a little bit further behind because they dropped her off right here on the side of French Hill and she was coming this direction here. And so I get back up here on uh, the main drag out and then a very kind thought come to me. And the thought that was placed in my mind said, you know you have one more phone call to make back in the U.S. And when you do, you're going to get there and you're going to turn your back to the wind and you won't move. You will stay right there. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, well, I knew that's true, but I'm like, okay, well, fine. I'll just go down the hill, right? So I turned back around, not knowing that it was the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord telling me, in detail what I was about to do. And it was true, I would do exactly that. But the thing was, the Spirit of the Lord knew that if I stood there and turned around and did exactly that, I was going to die or be severely wounded, one or the other. And so I turned around and I came back down. I hadn't, I hadn't got up to that curve or to the corner yet where the pole was, but I was fixing to change the phone call. And sure enough, I changed the phone call. I come back around and just, you know, it's not what at that time it wasn't so far back like this. It was much closer to the road, even where you come at down through there. Uh, Cause I, I can't even tell with all this stuff built up now. It, I know that w the way I would go in would have been almost still in that same direction across from where I was at. You'd go down right in here. Uh, probably where you see that little pathway there would seem to be more accurate. 
uh, but there was a little pathway right in here that would go steep down there, same place, directly across from where the pole is. The only difference is, not only is there the steep pathway, but there was also a little small barrier wall right there. Not a tall one, it was short, but it was still there. And as I started down that little path, just started to get going down it, all of a sudden, that girl by that time had made it up here and was confronted by the police. And when she did, and of course you have here on Harris, two uh, killed in suicide attack at French Hill, at least 15 people hurt in Jerusalem police chief blast carried out by female suicide bomber at the Alaska Mosque Brigade's claims responsibility. Uh, you had several articles, and back in, back in those days, they actually had even shown pretty graphic imagery there. And this one here, if you'll notice just the way it looks here with all the police and everything there, the ambulances, etc. If you look at that, and then if you go to our website, I'm the one that took this photo that day myself. And this is the same image from the opposite direction. Uh, and this was minutes after this happened. It was that rapid that the forces were dis dispatched there. You know, within just, I would say within 10 minutes, what the scene you see here was right after the bombing. But anyway, as the girl blew herself up, I was still close enough uh, from when I started down the hill that the blast completely knocked me off my feet. Just the concussion of the blast. And I knew that it was a suicide bomber that had, that had done that very thing. And, um, and I even said to the person I was on the phone with, somebody just blew themselves up. Uh, so I got off the phone, I went back up and after things began to settle down, I realized all those thoughts that were going on in my head were a battle between Satan and God. It was the Lord that was directing my path to stay clear of her and would have gotten me even further away from her had I just obeyed when I felt that first inclination to go that direction. But then the devil was trying his best to make sure I died that day or at least would be severely wounded. And he got me to go back. And even the differences in the thoughts, you know, I'll never forget it. You idiot. You know, you, and he didn't lie about it. You did, you know, you hate going that way. It's true. I hate it going that way, you know, and then the sweet, calm Holy Spirit said, if you do that, you'll get to that corner and you won't leave. Later that morning, or that afternoon after she blew herself up, I walked back up to that corner, and I looked at the pole where I always stood at, uh, not intentionally even thinking to look at the pole, I just happened to walk up where the pole was, and the shrapnel had struck the pole several times from the blast itself. You had fresh, huge gouges into the pole uh, from the blast itself. That's how close I was to her. And of course, being standing there, then I would, like I said, I would have been either one of the injured uh, people, there were 15 that were injured, or, or could have been killed from it, either one. And of course, the height of those, uh, that shrapnel pieces would have been chest type of height to begin with. So I really knew that it was our Heavenly Father that was looking out for me that day. And uh, so I thought I'd share that with you. I thought, you know, uh, but that's what the picture is when you look at our YouTube channel. That is September 22nd, 2004, when that happened. I used to live in Jerusalem at the time, and uh, that's where it was, that's what that, that happened there. Um, I also mentioned to you that I would share with you, uh, there, of course, there was one other time. I almost got shot by the police one time. I was actually a police officer at the time. I got pulled over, and I was going into Alabama from Florida, and uh, they had pulled me over, and I had my service revolver right there beside me. Uh, and in those days, you know, I had a standard vehicle, and I had, uh, you had your emergency brake. And I was sitting on a little bit of an incline. And as they were, the two officers were coming up on either side, uh, the vehicle started to roll. And I carried a sniper rifle in the back seat as well. So the first thing they saw was that. And uh, not knowing who it was in the car, because they couldn't see me. And, of course, I'm in plain clothes at the time and my service revolver by the emergency brake. 
And as the car started to roll, I reached over to do the emergency brake and the officer on the passenger side couldn't see who, that it was me. Uh, he knew who I was, but he didn't see it was me at the time. And he uh, reached for his gun. And later I found out, you know, of course it became a big thing at the sheriff's office that, he, you know, he was very nervous because he said that, he said, I almost killed him, thinking he was going for his gun. And, uh, but by the grace of God, he stopped and, uh, you know, all, all ended up not being a big deal or anything, and I, you know, as far as that went. But that was another incident that happened. But uh, I'll share one miracle with you, though. And this one's kind of special to me because I was, uh, oh gosh, how old was I? I don't know, maybe 21, 22 years old. No, maybe about 23. And my mother lived in an apartment complex, and there's a little basketball court there. But right near the goal, which was on the edge of the asphalt there, there was a pretty good drop about like that, maybe about, oh, eight, 10 inch drop on the asphalt straight down. And I never was very good at basketball. Uh, you know, I loved it, loved to play it and everything, you know, but I wasn't like good at it. And I'm out there just shooting some hoops, you know, and, and I went to go to, I jumped up, I could jump pretty doggone high too, uh, but I jumped up to do a shot. And when I came down, my foot hit that asphalt and did like that. And I literally snapped my ankle uh, or broke, yeah, broke my ankle. Just, I don't know what part of it broke, but it just snapped. You talking about screaming from pain. Oh my gosh, I never felt so much pain in all my life. And I knew it was broke. I knew that I'd, where this is the base of your leg, whatever part you break, I knew I'd broke it. Um, and I began to just cry out unto the Lord. And I, and I was crying out for Jesus to heal me right then and there. I, I mean, I wasn't looking to go to the hospital. I didn't, I, I mean, of course, I realized that's where I was going to end up at uh, pretty quick, like. But I just cried out to God for, for him to touch me, to heal me. I said, you know, God, I said, I can't, I can't deal with it. I can't deal with this pain. And, and just a few seconds later, it as if nothing ever even happened. Not a pain, not a swelling, nothing. I got up and I walked away as if no, like nothing, no big deal. And I just praised him for healing me. I was so happy that he'd healed me. Well, I didn't think much of it, right? You know, I mean, other than I was just happy and I knew that I, I really felt strong that I'd broken, broken my ankle. ankle. When me and Yana first got married, I went to the doctor one day and I was going through a full full scale evaluation. Now he's a, he's a regular he's a doctor, but he also did a thing called iridology, and uh, that's where they can look at the mapping in your eyes and every traumatic thing that happens in your body. It leaves a mapping of what you've had happen in your life, and extremely accurate. Uh, I mean, I, it just blows me away the accuracy of this type of thing. It was discovered by a Hungarian doctor many years ago. And uh, so anyway, I'm going through the through this exam, and uh, that doctor sits back in his chair and he looks at me, and he said, "When did you break your ankle?" And I looked at him and I said, "How do you know I broke my ankle?" He said, well, "You broke your right ankle." I said, "Really?" I said, "You actually know that?" And he said, "Yeah." He said, "You it's mapped out right in." your eyes there that you broke your ankle at some time in your life. He said you had a pretty bad break, uh, no doubt as well. And I told him the story of what happened. And uh, he said, well, he said, your eyes have recorded that, that break took place, even though it had been years earlier. And, uh, and of course, I was always fascinated because you don't, you never had to tell him anything about yourself, what you suffer, what you go through. He could, he could go through there and see everything. Uh, so it's a very fascinating uh, procedure to go through. But uh, yeah, that, that, that kind of blew me away as well. But I figured I'd just share that with you because he's still our healer. He can, he can touch you. He's felt by the feeling of our infirmities. You know, so next time you have a serious situation, don't forget, cry out. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live on our Patreon channel. Thank you for watching. God bless you. And thank you for your support of this channel too. Share it with your friends. Uh, 
and we got more things we'll do this weekend here for you as well i just wanted to share this little short video with you today doing a lot of studying today a lot of a lot of work on uh, other messages that i'm going to bring out we're going on teaching right now uh but anyway god bless you and thank you